Hello, everybody, and good afternoon. My name is Omar Garcia from QNAP, and today I will be talking to you about QSync and QSync Central Station 2.0. QSync is our custom software that has Dropbox-like functionality with no limit on storage, depending on the NAS you purchase and the size of hard drives, and there is no charge to use this service besides the upfront cost of the NAS itself. The great thing about QSync is that you can sync across multiple de multiple devices, such as your desktop computer, laptop, tablet, and mobile devices, with all of them having the same data. As a reminder, we will have a link to our older QSync webinar, as you can see here, to take a look at, as well as to compare some of the differences between the new and older version of QSync. One of the new features we have implemented in this new version of QSync, introduced in new QTS 4.2.0, you now have the ability to manage some of the options your individual users can set up via the QSync client on their device. With the older version of QSync, you did not have this functionality, and so you couldn't set these options. I will be going over this later on in the demo so I can show you an example of how this will work. Also, with the updated version of QSync, also comes improved performance. The database and synchronization algorithm used by QSync has been re engineered to up to twice as fast performance for a single user, but the biggest performance gain can be seen with team folders. For example, a team folder with up to 24 users will notice a performance increase of 20 times what the older version of QSync could handle. Also a new feature implemented with QSync is that you now have the option to sync your local folders on your computer with shared folders you have created on the NAS. This comes as a great benefit to many of our users, which were previously limited to only being able to synchronize one folder on their computer, that being the local QSync folder. Now with this update, you have the option to synchronize multiple folders on your computer as long as you do a one-to-one -one sync with the shared folder on the NAS. I will go over this feature later on in our demo as well, so you can see more of an example of how that works. Another, another great feature that has been implemented is the remotely erased feature. With the latest version of QSync, you have the option to erase remote devices. This feature that's added with security in mind. Say, for example, you are synchronizing with your laptop or mobile device and they were to get lost or stolen. We have vital, valuable, and sometimes priceless information those devices we cannot afford to get into the wrong hands. Now, with the remotely erase option, you have to erase that device to ensure your data being synced with QSync is not compromised with the feature. This is a list of our supported devices that will support QSync. As you can see, the QSync client can be installed on Windows and Mac computers. Uh, the QFile application, which can be used for QSync, can be installed on iOS and Android devices. And then also via the web management using FileStation, you can access QSync contents that are being synced with your account. Uh, next, we'll be go ahead and jumping into a live demo, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about QSync first. I'm going to go ahead and open QSync in my web browser on my QNAP, which I'm accessing remotely. And right here, you can see FileStation, as I was just referring to. And this is my QSync location that I currently have synced with my admin account. You can see these are the folders that I have set up and some test documents that I have set up are being synchronized. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you on my local computer the documents that I have synced up with this QCenter account. There's two different ways I can open this. I can go to my Windows and open up my documents, and I can go right here to the location, and you'll see all the data that I have right there. Or I can also go right here to my hidden icons, click on it, Look for my QSync logo, right click on it. There'll be an option for open QSync folder. And to the left, I can click on QSync. And it'll open up that same folder I just had open. Now, if you can see, let me adjust my windows a little bit so you can see it better. You can see that these two locations, one being the NAS on the left and the other one being the local computer to the right, show the same folders being synced between the two. On the folder on the right on my local computer, you can see that the folders in the files show a green check mark. That means those files have been files and folders have been fully synchronized.
Now we'll go ahead and open up QSync Central Station on the QNAP so you can see what it looks like. So on this icon over here is the blank space. You'll be able to see the desktop on your QNAP space. There's a couple of different ways you can open QSync Central Station 2.0. You see a desktop icon right here that says QSync Central Station 2.0 or if you own menu, which you can access by the three horizontal bars to the left, click on it, you should see QSync Central Station 2.0. If you do not see it there, you can go back to the desktop, open up the control panel, go to network services, and then QSync Central Station 2.0, and that will open for you. That'll open up the overview page. Scroll up so you can see it a little bit better. If you do not have QSync Central Station 2.0 enabled on your QNAP, or if you want the service, you can do so here by clicking on this button. You can see right here, see right now it says the name I'm currently using QSync. You can click on it and that'll disable you from using QSync. If you do not have the QSync client installed on your Windows or Mac computer, like I was here, you can see down here under getting started with QSync clients, you have the option to click on Windows, download the Windows file so you can install the client on your computer, or you can use Mac as well. You can click on the same icon. And then right here, it shows the options for Q file, which are available on Apple iOS devices and Android devices, which you can download from their respective app stores. And then also right here, it'll show you how you can, uh, the option we have for managing Q file station, like I was showing you earlier. Also, MyQNAP is set up for remote apps using MyQNAP Cloud, which is a free service we offer. If you want to go directly into setting that up on your queue you may not have set up before, if you click on this logo right here, it'll open the MyQNAP Cloud location within the desktop, and you can go ahead and set that up. Now we're going to jump into the management settings that I was referring to earlier. This this is an option that you'll only be able to see in the QNAP web interface as the admin user, the admin user which administers, administers all of this information. The default is user customization mode. It's the default option and you select this option for all of your users, they will all be able to individually set up their preferences that as they have currently been doing with their QSync client. The added feature in this is central configuration mode. Go ahead and go to the GUI so you can see that. We'll go back into here, QSync Central, go to Management Settings. So you can see right now I have this feature enabled, but I'll go ahead and go back, leave it on User Customization Mode, which is the default. I just click on the radio button and I hit Apply. So with that being enabled right now, I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of exactly what that does. So uh, the options that are disabled are the options that are enabled are these right here, and those are the ones that I'm going to show you. So the way to get back into those options on my QSync client is go back here to my hidden icons, go to where I have QSync, right click on it, and go to preferences. Now when I go to preferences, right now mine is opening in the sync tab. You can see down here one of the options I currently have to enable is smart delete. What Smart Delete is, is if this option is enabled, right now it's currently not enabled. So if I had a checkbox in there and I hit apply, it would be enabled. If this was enabled when deleting a file or folder from your local device, the QSync client on Windows, for example, that same file or folder will not be deleted from the QSync location on the NAS. If the option is not enabled, which is the way it is now, the opposite of that will occur. The file will also be deleted from the NAS, so neither the NAS or your local client will have those files or folders anymore. Now, if we go over to the Policy tab, now you'll see the option for Conflict Policies. This would allow you to specify what you, how you want to handle conflict policies as they arise. We won't go over the first option because the first option, let me decide for each file, it does just that. Every time it detects a conflict, you will, yeah. you will get a pop-up saying yeah. how, you know, how you want to handle this conflict policy. The ones we will be going over to are the last four, which work in pairs, two and three being the opposite of each other, and then four and five as well being the opposite of each other. 
the first two, which are rename the file or files on the NAS and rename local files, both deal with, with just renaming the conflict file and retaining the previous copy. So the first option, as I have selected right now, rename files on file or files on the NAS means if a conflict is detected, the existing copy will rename remain on the NAS, but the conflict file will be renamed. The second option, which is rename local files, will do the exact opposite of that. The local conflict file or files on your computer will be renamed while still retaining the existing copy. The last two options, which are replace file or files on the NAS with local file or files, and replace local file or files with file or files on the NAS, both deal with overwriting slash replacing the file. So right now the option that I have selected, replace file or files on the NAS with local file or files, means if a conflict is detected, the file or files on the NAS will be overwritten with the file or files from your local computer. So that, that will take over what's on the NAS. The second option between those two is the exact opposite of that. Replace local file or files with files or fi file or files on the NAS and the local conflict files will be overwritten with the files from the NAS. I know this, this, this conflict policy sentence can get a bit confusing. So if you have any questions on that, feel free to ask. My colleagues will go ahead and answer those questions for you. Now the other option you have the ability that also right here is the filter settings. So you can set this up during synchronization filter settings. There's some default filters that are already existing in there. So when you're syncing your QSync with your NAS, you can select uh, to exclude certain files. For example, you want to exclude some executables or some JPEG files. But there are extensions in here and add them, and that will filter those files from synchronizing using QSync. And you also have the, another one of the options you have the ability to set up as well is mail. You can set up uh, for when sharing any links, you can set uh, email where you'll be using to share those links. So that's currently the, the way the default is of user customization mode on how those different settings on the QSync client. So right now I, I can go ahead and manipulate all those settings as I sit. If you enable the radio button for central configuration mode, set up, you have the option to set up which of those preferences or settings you want to have to be able to set up. So say I only want my users to decide how to handle conflict policies. Conflict policies. I'll only enable that option, leaving the other ones unchecked. Hit apply. Now we'll go back into my client. Go to preferences. Give it a few seconds to refresh. And now you can see, since I've only selected conflicts, now my mail setup is grayed out. I don't have the option to do that. If I go to sync, I no longer have the option for smart delete. I can't set up those settings. If I go to policy, now do filter settings, I click on filter settings, it's grayed out as well. I no longer have that option. But I enabled conflict policy, so I still have the option to decide what I want to set up. I can still apply those settings. So that's a great new feature that's been added if you want to administer all those settings as and you want to dictate what your users can and cannot set up in their QSync client. Now the next uh, option section we'll be going over is user management. In the user management section, see which uh, QSync users that you currently have online or offline, how many they're connecting with, and then also you'll be able to see the all users tab to see all the users on your QSync on your that are enabled on your QNAP and the option to whether you want to enable or just to be using QSync. So let's go ahead and go back to the QNAP. So now right here I'll click on the users section. Now you'll see online users. Currently have two users connected. Right now the admin which is myself and Nate which is another user and you can see the devices we're connected on right here under total devices the login time, login, and source IP. If I click on the option for all users, 
you'll be able to see users I have on my QNAP. And then right here, you can search for local users, or if your NAS is also joined to domain, I'm logged in as admin so I can see those options, you can select the domain users. As you can see, I have certain users that are granted permission to use QSync, and I have one. The ones that are granted to use QSync will show up as a status of offline or on they're connected and their devices. If I have a user that's not access, access to use QSync, they'll show up as unauthorized until I give them access. For example, I'll checkbox here, it'll show allow. You have the status now changed to offline. I, you'll get a pop up and if you want to enter that setting, click OK. I'll wait for that to apply. And now that user will be able, granted access to use that as on to, online until they try to. Now you also have the option if you don't want to create users from the setting, going control panel, privilege settings, users, click on create user right here. And you'll get the pop up and you can go through the settings user normally would. Now next we'll go into the device management section. This section will monitor what devices have connected to your NAS and with what account, local or domain. With admin, you'll be able to see those, those different settings. For example, if you're connected via, you will see something like QSync-File Station. If you're connected with your computer, you will see of the computer as you set up on the QSync client when you first connected, you have the option the name you want to use. If you are connected through Q file on your mobile device, you will see Q file dash Samsung or Q file dash iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and open the browser. Go to devices. I, these are the local users I have. And you can see the different devices that are connected. Uh, so and if you, um, I'm currently accessing via the web browser using FileStation, you'll see as FileStation. Um, the computer I'm using is Dell Dash PC. You can see I'm connected as that device. It'll also, and then also for the mobile devices, Q file. You'll see right all the using Q file connected on their iPhone, and I'm also connected with Q file on my Samsung. And to, next to that, we'll show you the version of ink they're using or Q file. The source connecting from the lady this event, event times, and how they're connected. The important, the important section to remember here will be under action, where you'll see you'll have the option to block guys from syncing via QSync, which is this right here. You, you can click on it to block them. You have the option right here to click on settings. If you click, it'll give you the option to set up those same preferences I was referring to under management settings smart delete, conflict policy, and email. And then you also have the option right here to go to the event logs. I'll go over that section next, so I won't click on that. But the biggest update is the one I was referring to earlier about remotely erasing this device. That's a feature we talked about when your device gets lost or stolen, you have the option to erase the contents of your folders that are being synced with QSync. When clicking on this feature, you, you'll get quite a few pop-ups asking you to confirm if this is what you want to do and will ha have you enter the admin password of the NAS and a verification code that gives you a 60-second timer to complete. Once that is done, you'll have to hit OK a few more times to apply because it, it really wants to confirm whether you want to erase the content. Once that has been done, the device will begin getting erased. So this icon you see right here, it will go ahead and change from the, the file with the green looking Wi-Fi signal, it'll actually change to red. So meaning, you know, it's been it's been erased. So say down the line, you know, a few days pass or weeks and you end up recovering that device and you want to recover and, and resynchronize the data that was on there, this this button will change to recover and when you click on that, it'll be begin begin resyncing and that data will be synchronized back onto that client. So they will be in sync with both between the NAS and the client itself. So the next option, like I said, we'll be going over is event logs. This is this is a really handy tool you can take a look at, especially as the admin. You can take a look at all your different users you have here on the NAS. You can select them by name. 
and see what what their activity has been, whether you know when they've been logging in and logging out. It'll show the device names they've been using. Right here, the action, like I was saying, whether they've been logged in or they they were syncing files. Details on what they were doing, you know, started syncing, sync the file and the source IP. It's good for administration, just kind of overviewing everything all your users have been doing, just to keep track of all the events. Maybe somebody deleted a file they weren't supposed to, you can track down to see what happened there. And now the next we'll be going over is team folders. This option is great for collaboration amongst coworkers in the workplace or students' classmates. They all need to collaborate on projects together and sharing can be a pain. With the team folder option, you can share with coworkers and classmates so once a file or folder from one device, devices within that team folder will have access to our once it's synchronized. So it's, it's a pretty good feature. Let's go ahead and show you an example of this right now. So since I already have my QSync in it right here from Fastbar, or if I didn't have it open, I can go there earlier, hit an icon, open up my QSync client, QSync folder, sync. So now I want to create a test a team folder that I want to share with one of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click, new folder. Now you can see right here, it turns to a blue icon. I don't, I don't know if you caught that, but that means it was in the process. Now that it has, it's going to go to the green check mark, it's going to show that it's synchronized and now it's been synchronized. To share this folder, you go ahead and right click on it. You sync icon with the name QSync next to it. Go to the right and click on the option shoulder as a team folder. You'll now get a pop-up from the QSync client saying Q users. Again, you'll have the option to local or domain users. I'm going to go ahead and share with local QNAP user and a Nate user. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. Wave apply. And now once that's shared out, you can see down here you'll get a notification. Share the team folder, share test folder as a team. Folder. And now those colleagues that I now that folder with now we'll have the option to accept or reject the share. I'm going to do to show you an example of that. I'm going to go ahead and share a team folder with me, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to show up and the different options of you have whether you have whether accepting or rejecting. So now you can see down here on my taskbar notification it says team folder invitation. Nate has invited you to use the team folder and you can my QSync icon now shows up with a one in the yellow circle giving letting me know I have a update. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and close this out. So if I right click on this and if I go I can go to sharing and file update center. And now sharing center, I'll be able to see that this folder has been shared with me. It's called, this is a previous team folder that was shared with me. So I can, you know, as actions, I can edit it and remove that share. This new test one folder that was just shared with me, I have the option right here whether to reject that share. So I can decide to do so right there. Now, also, if I go back to my interface, go back to my browser, go to team folder, be able to see right here, I can change the types from all types. I can share in Google to see the folders that I'm sharing with other people. I'll go back to that option. With You'll see it under all types. Of so now under shared with me, the folder test one that's been shared with me by the owner, Nate, the receiver admin, this is still waiting. I have the option, let me scroll this over. I can click and check accept or I can hit right here direct. I'll go ahead and click accept and now I'm joined to that team folder and now me and my colleague Nate can both start synchronizing files and that I'm mean, uploading files for, to that and we'll both be able to access them so we can continue working together and collaborating as a team.
So like I was saying right here, you have the option. You can see by all types, you'll be able to see different team folders you have. For example, you can see I have this team folder screenshot owner. I, you know, I haven't shared with nobody, or I, I have this test team folder, and then I've been Nate. I can continue sharing with them, or I can go right here to under. Say I wanted to remove one of those users, they still have, but say if I wanted to remove them from using that share, I can click right here, hit OK. That user will no longer have access to, to that share had already the team folder invitation. If I just wish to unshare that team folder completely, right here, I can click on this icon right here that has a red, it. you highlight it, it says unshared. I can click the team folder will now be unshared and they will no longer be able to synchronize or collaborate using that. So now the next offer shared folders. This is one of the new features that I was talking about earlier. This is sync multiple folders on your computer instead of having to use the default QSync load. I've been showing you every time I go into Windows or File Explorer, you know, I, I go to this location. Most of you may be familiar with using sync that way. But say, you know, using what if I want to sync my, you know, my documents, I want to sync my music or my before you didn't have that ability, now the ability to sync these multiple folders and shared folders. So I'll go ahead and show you an example of how to do this in my my pictures folder on my computer so i've created a for all my nas and i love that that folder to sync my pictures as you can see in here this shared folder you'll have different options in here for your shared folders whether you want to grant them access to be used for q sync i have other folders that i've been using as well but for this case right now let's talk about q sync my pictures so to, be, to have a user be able to sync with this folder, you also need to make sure they have the proper permissions. So see this option for permissions, you can verify they have permissions there or you can go to control panel, privilege say folders. So I wanna allow my user to be able to sync. They already have permission to go on that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on grant. You'll see allow. Right now the status is disabled, hit apply. We'll wait for that apply and the status will change to enabled. So now as you see, now it shows it's granted and it's enabled. So now let's begin synchronizing. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my QSync client again. Close this out. Get back into preference, go back into preferences. Now the tab we wanna click on is gonna be the sync tab. The sync tab is gonna have this in here that says manage paired folders. When you click on manage, You now see the option for add. Click on add, and now see I see now see the, now see the folder that you just allowed access to synchronize. If you don't see it, go ahead and click on refresh to make sure it shows up. And to the right of that folder, put a sync with the paired local folder, as you can see right here, shared folders on the NAS, which is going to be pictures, and then the paired local folder will be on the right. So I'm going to click on the green plus sign. Select the folder on my computer, which is going to be my pictures. Click OK. And now it'll show the path that's going to be synced together. Go ahead and click OK. It's going to tell you synchronization with a new filter folder will take complete as it will involve moving the applicable files. Do you want to continue? Go ahead and click OK. Go ahead and close that out. OK. Now let's go back. Now, as I did show you earlier as well. You can, when you click on Show Hidden Icons, go to your QSync client. Right now, it shows it's uploading because it's already beginning syncing with that folder. If I right-click it, now when I go up to Open QSync Folder, not only will I see the default QSync folder, but I also see the My Pictures that I'm syncing with. When I click on that, now you'll see the pictures that I have in My Pictures. I'll show up with a green check mark now that they've been synced with my QNAP and that shared folder that I have on the QNAP NAS. So 
Now the next option I'll be going over is shared file links. This option will show you the links to file names slash folders that users or you have shared with the link that was set up and how long that link is valid for. I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of how to share a link or a folder. One of the good new features with this is with sharing a folder. That is, you now have the option to enable uploading to that folder in case you wanna have somebody share a document back with you, you can access that way as well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, back into, go back to, let's go ahead and open my default QSync location. So I have this folder in here, we'll do test. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, right click on it, go to QSync and click on share the link. Now it's gonna open up right here. It's gonna give you a pop-up saying create link. What you wanna do first is click on settings. So you, you can go ahead and set up a link name, I call it test or I can call it something else. You can set up the name and then you can change whether you're connecting you're going to be sharing with the user on the local IP address, WAN IP address, or MyQNAP Cloud. So for now, we're using MyQNAP Cloud, so I'll choose the MyQNAP Cloud name. If you want to go ahead and set up encryption when you share this using SSL to make this, you can go ahead and click on the checkbox for create the SSL link. If you want to allow file uploading like I was just talking about to this folder, you can go ahead and click on apply. And then right here, you can also set an expiration date as well. Say, you know, you only want this link to be valid for a day or two. You can go ahead right here on the calendar and select the day on how long you want it to be valid for. Go ahead and turn that off for now. And then you can also set password. Uh, you can, that way it's a little bit more secure when they're accessing as well. If they don't have the password, they won't be able to access. You have the option to set a random password or you can just create your own password. We'll just call it test for testing purposes for now. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. So it says the share link was test was updated successfully. Click OK. Now you can go back to send. Now you have the option. You can email it to some of your, your users, your colleagues, your classmates that you want to share it with. Go ahead and create a subject, you know, some content, and you can share it out with them. Or you could just send them the link directly. You can copy it right here to your clipboard, or you can copy and select it from right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this to clipboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go to my web browser. Go ahead and enter that into my browser. And this will be what the share link shows like. So it's gonna give me a pop-up. It's gonna say verify password. So I gotta type in the password test, hit okay. And now I'll see that folder that I've shared with those users. You'll see the link name that we created, test, and this will be the folder. I can go ahead and download that folder right here if I would like to, or I can click on it to view the content. So right here, you can see the content, and I actually don't have anything in there, but if there was, you'd be able to see it. But the one, the one thing I was talking about that's been updated is also that upload feature. So if you can see over here to the right, there's the upload button, the up pointing arrow, and if you highlight it, it'll say upload. If you click on that, you know it'll go to a location on your computer, go to my desktop, and I'll go ahead and upload a file. I'll call this one test upload. Open. And now it's been uploaded there and that document will now be in there and now myself or other users that I've shared, shared the link with will be able to access this file. So that's a, good, that's a good little feature that's been updated as well. Now the last thing I'll be going over is version control. With the updated version of QSync, you now have the option for versioning. This is a great feature if you have many people collaborating on the same files and folders as we've been discussing. And say, for example, yesterday, uh, one of those users that you're sharing with made modifications to a file. And today you may need access to the information that was overwritten. You now have the option to go back and recover that previous file and restore from it. With version control, you have the option to save up to 64 versions of a previous file. You also have the option to enable version control on certain folders below the default QSync folder to save storage space. Go back into the web browser, go to my NAS, version control. And this would be the option where you wanna go ahead and enable version control. 
if you want to enable, like I was just saying, version control on certain folders below the default QSync folder to save storage space, you have to click this option right here to enable it. And then you can leave it as, as it's been the default, all files and subfolders under the QSync folder. Or you can click on the radio button for assign specific subfolders under the QSync folder. One thing to note here is that it's limited to where you can only, the target folder, sorry about that. You can only set up to five folders below. So you can, you will only have the option to select those. As you see right here on the note, only five QSync folders can be chosen for version control when this option is enabled. So you could click on the add button and then under my QSync folder, those, these will be the different folders I have and I can set those up for versioning or I can just choose one if I only want to use one. But we'll just go ahead and leave it as the default now for version control. And right here, if you click on the advanced tab, is where you'll be able to set up the maximum number of versions you, you want. So you can set up from two all the way up to 64. So if we have the ability to have up to 64 versions. Why not use that many versions if we have the available storage space? So let's go ahead and click apply. Okay. And you also have this neat little feature down here called the space use allow you to check how much space versioning is using up in your QSync location. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of versioning and how, how that works. So we're gonna to go to File Station. You see right here in my QSync location, which is on the NAS, these are the files I currently have. So for example, this tour.txt file, I'm gonna right click on it, go to the bottom where you see the option for previous versions, click on it, you'll see previous versions that you have showing up in there. You know, you can select on it, you can download or restore that file, but let's go ahead and open up that file so you can see what it looks like. So right here, tour. Go ahead and open that file. So this is currently what's in there. There's currently just a link in there, and this is a, a link to a tour that I actually did some time ago. So let's go ahead and write some text in here, call it test versioning for QNAP. Go ahead and save that file, close it out. Now we'll go back here into QSync, go ahead and click on refresh. So there you go. Now I've, I had some te technical difficulties there, so I just needed to refresh my file station. So now you can see right here, the file has been edited and it shows what I edited, test version for QNAP. I can close that out. And now here, the previous version that I have in there, if I go ahead and download it, go ahead and open it right here with Notepad, and they'll show you the previous document where it only had the, the link for the tour that I had right there. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and click on restore and that would restore that file so I can access those contents or I can just open it like I just did right there and continue editing as I did before. And that's that's about all the features that have been up, 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 updated in the latest version of QSync. So f feel free to go ahead and test it out for yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and We'll be able to help you out. Have a good day.